It was really no bigger than a glorified walk-in closet, but it contained an entire civilization. Sacred Trash tells the story of what is arguably the greatest discovery of Jewish manuscripts ever made. It's a find that's so vivid that one of the greatest 20th century scholars of this material referred to it as the Living Sea Scrolls. Geniza is a barely translatable Hebrew term that holds within it um, an ultimate statement about the worth of words and their place in Jewish life. Jewish communities throughout the world would take their worn out holy books and would place them in a Geniza. For reasons that remain mysterious, in one particular community, that of Old Cairo or Fustat, this notion extended beyond holy text and was applied to anything written in Hebrew letters. Documents written in Hebrew, in Aramaic, in Judeo-Arabic, in Judeo-Persian, even in Yiddish, required Geniza. This particular community in Old Cairo never buried their document. Because of the Geniza, we can almost see and hear and touch the world of these Arabized Jews. Fustat wasn't some backwater. It was at that time home to the most prosperous Jewish community on earth. It was also the hub of Mediterranean commerce. For almost a thousand years, starting in the late 10th century, an entire community put all of its written detritus into this room. It was as if the entire society had been emptying its pockets out for a, almost a millennium. As a result, we found there everything from uh, poems to letters to marriage contracts. Court depositions, uh, rabbinic responsa. Uh, children's primers, doctor's prescriptions, everything that the society wrote down. The story has an incredible cast of characters, beginning with two unlikely Jewish heroines, a set of identical twin sisters who happened to be Presbyterian Scotswomen, Agnes Lewis and Margaret Gibson. In one May day, it was 1896, Agnes, one of the twins, was out for a walk and she bumped into this incredibly charismatic, remarkably learned Jewish figure, Solomon Schechter, who was a Romanian-born Talmud scholar, was teaching at Cambridge, and she told him about one of the manuscripts they brought back that they couldn't identify and asked him to have a look and within hours, he knew that he had a vital link in the chain of Jewish transmission that went all the way back to the days when the Second Temple was still standing. It was a page from the long-lost apocryphal Hebrew book of Ben Sira or Ecclesiasticus. Our book begins with the journey that led Schechter from that greasy scrap all the way to Cairo, where he walked up a very rickety ladder and entered into a hole in the wall, much like Alice in Wonderland. He entered into the world of the Cairo Geniza, and he understood when he saw that whole room filled with manuscripts, which it turned out was where that piece of Ben Sira had come from, that he actually would need to gather up as much of it as he could, pack it up into crates, and ship it back to Cambridge. The heroes of this book are the scholars. It would have been impossible to do the work that they did without deep imagination and profound passion. We write about what it was in each of these scholars' lives that led them to a virtually lifelong obsession with this material, what led to their major discoveries, and also what it was about them that enabled them to see treasure where other people had just seen garbage. The discovery of the Geniza basically gives us the most extensive and grounded and concrete view we have of any period of pre-modern Jewish history. There is nothing like the Geniza in that sense. You can really reconstruct a world from these documents. 